Aries, this is all about you. This is your weekend oracle and no, this is your week ahead oracle and tarot card reading from Born Without Boundaries. I'm so sorry about the tongue tiedness. Forgive me, guys. So yeah, this is your oracle card spread. This is an energy reading. It's not a horoscope. So it's based on intuitive energy gathering. It's not based on necessarily the cosmos, but I know the cosmos directs the readings and I'm always in sync with the astrology, especially as the way I understand it. Um, so what that means for you is this can apply Aries to sun, moon, rising, or wherever Aries influences your natal chart. You can take these energies for the next week or so from whenever you see the video. I no longer put dates on my video because I realize they really don't matter to people. People are still watching videos that I made in August. So, um, um, so I don't put dates on anymore. So it comes to you when it's time, but the energies last for about a week out. So just think about it like what's going on around you while you watch this video. Uh, there's always an extended reading and that link is in the description box below and in the comments so that you can easily access it. Um, that is a tarot card reading, much more personal, articulating this reading and expanding upon it. And that includes a romantic reading as well. Um, um, what was I going to say though? Oh, let's just get into your reading and it'll, it'll come to me. Oh, because I don't put dates on my videos, they can come, they come to you when they need to, but I do do a new video for Aries every single week. So if you want the video when it's fresh and hot off the press, please subscribe to my channel, help the channel grow and get the videos as soon as I upload them by ringing that bell so that you'll get notifications when they come out what I wanted you to know. This is beautiful, actually. Could be love coming into your life. These are crazy, wacky cards today. Let's see what's come out. So far. Be peace. So this is Libra energy. Okay. Now Libra energy is, what is it? It's balance. It's balance and it's partnership. So this is love, but love in the big sense, love in the peace sense, love as in the dove is the peace offering. It's also the symbol of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's that third component that helps both sides balance out the two. So this is your crowning energy. Overall, the theme then, or just the energy influencing you, Aries, is being able to find or looking for, searching for, or finally pinpointing that third component that helps make things make sense and helps even things out. Perhaps it is you that's behaving as the third component um, between, uh, between friends who are in dispute, between um, parents, between um, people at work. But this is not a sense of you being stuck there. This is a sense of you actually being able to, wanting to be there, um, using your influence in a way that helps the situation and puts things into balance, makes things make sense. You're that energy that is making things make sense. This is also a sense of finding peace in your heart space, finding peace in a partnership, um, finding a balance, finding a harmony, um, maybe making peace or offering peace to a situation that hadn't been working out or, were, or were, where there were a lot of unanswered questions. This could be somebody making a peace offering to you as well, which would heavily impact you and affect you. I think because when people go to war with you, it's all out. Um, and so you could get caught up in a rage and not even know that you've continued it on longer than it needed to go. This is that sense of realizing and being comfortable with it coming to an end and allowing it to come to an end, which means something has come into place to help things make sense to you, Aries. Because it wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't just call off the troops for no reason, right? Um, unless you win or somebody's given you a good reason to realize, hey, you know what? Maybe I already have one. Maybe I've won just by walking away from this situation because I can't waste my resources on it anymore. Whatever it is, this is resolution and um, a finish, an end, peaceful conclusion finally coming around. 
Let's see what this situation is. Take a leap of faith, jumping into something brand new because you think it's gonna be good for you. Or feeling lucky. Are you feeling lucky? You feel lucky. You're about to take a risk or a chance or do something that may be out of character for you because you know it's for the best. You can feel that it's for the best. Um, these two cards together make me think that, yeah, the best leap forward is maybe the, the, the best path forward is maybe the path that isn't as obvious to you. It isn't as comfortable to you, which means you will have to take a leap of faith on it. That leap of faith is that leap you take or that, that choice you make to commit yourself to something that you don't have total control of. You don't, you don't completely understand. It's a little bit foggy for you, but simultaneously you got a feeling. You got a feeling and it's almost like, do you see what I'm seeing when I see this? It's almost like that symbol of that bird flying, flying over a ship that's been lost at sea with a branch, which is a symbol that you're close to land. You're finally close to steady ground and even ground again. Yes, we're moving slowly out of Pisces season. Um, and we're moving out of retrograde. And I know that this season has been really especially rough for fire signs. So Aries, this could just be a sense of you're taking a leap and hoping that land is there. It's like land ho, land is there. Um, it's, it's, it's finally here, but you may have to you may have been lost at sea for so long you might have to take a leap of faith to just trust that it's going to be there. It is going to be there. And you'll be getting some synchronicities and divine messages coming into you to let you know that things are starting to lighten up. They're starting to ease up. Um, you're getting lucky. You, are you feeling lucky, Aries? Because you are. You're getting lucky this week because there are messages or offers that are being bought into you, bought toward you to let you know that things are going to be okay. Or like I said in the beginning of the reading, you yourself could be the messenger. It's interesting how I am mentioning um, life at sea when I get this card, tend to the small things, a mouse infestation. Usually this is something that's been building up. So in a good sense, it could be something that you were saving up for steadily over time and it's finally come to its max out conclusion where you could do something with it. Or this is a sense of you finally realizing or letting go of all of those little things that you've been trying to stack away or push away or ignore simply because maybe you didn't think they were that important at the same at, at the time, but they've become a huge problem like this infestation. Something has been building up that you have to deal with. Either way, there is something that you, that has been building up that you have to make a decision about. And this seems to be that you're getting lucky and that even if this is a, something that is sort of, I would say, bad, um, you're going to find solutions or resources to help you take care of it. It's almost like, yes, you made a lot of wrong turns steering the ship and now you're headed right into an iceberg, but simultaneously, look, there's another ship waving at you. You know, you could jump on board right away. You know, it's almost like, yeah, you're going to get lucky here and be able to sort of ditch um, a last ditch effort that will work out for you to get you out of a situation that may have been building and growing out of control. Okay, see the big picture. <laughs> this is definitely land ho. This is like finally you see that there is hope on the horizon. Something, it's not necessarily, well, yeah, it's almost like your life is being saved. You're saved. You're saved, Aries. This is, see the big picture. This is Taurus energy. So this is another energy that is run by Venus, right? Or ruled by Venus. Simply saying that this is love, tenderness, partnership, beauty, could be romance. Essentially, this is kindness and peace. Also, you can see it in his eyes. Giraffe is a wonderful energy because you're finally grounded on solid land, but it's also a sense of almost like a periscope, being able to look out and above and see things objectively and also out into the distance. I'm telling you, you're going to see that there's hope ahead. You're going to finally see dry land where you can land and get off of this crazy ride that you've been on. I think you also see a need to finally deal with those little things that have been building up inside of you. Because this is the energy of nine plus two, which means you're awakening. You're realizing what you need, 
or those little, you're realizing that A, little things matter and they do add up. And when you don't address them, they become something that's crazy. But simultaneously, you're realizing um, that it's almost like you're realizing that you have to deal with something that you haven't dealt with in a while. And I know that it's been building. Uh, overcome any obstacle, change. You're going to tackle this. Ooh, you have to. Um, this is Taurus energy as well. Once again, this energy of, well, this Taurus energy is also finances too, isn't it? Hmm. You know, you could be saving up. This is the energy of finally being able to buy a house or get a house or um, make a down payment or make a solid foundation. Like I said, this could be trouble building, but it could also be just saving up. Little by little, your savings for the future has helped you. Even if that is putting time in extra time at work and it's helped you get a promotion or putting time in like extra time at school and it's helped you get a new degree that'll help you get paid more or get to a higher tier of payment. Um, this is a sense of having tenacity and pushing yourself through or, you know, and you've taken this leap of faith and you've made this commitment and it now what I'm saying to you is now you can actually see something breaking you can see um the value starting to come through or the payback starting to happen lots of taurus energy if you are working on a relationship this could be a new relationship that's happening in your life involving most especially a taurus most especially a taurus that's been happening little by little just little nuances and little vibes that you've been picking up from this person. Love is all around. As I say this, love is all around. This is Gemini energy, which is communication, loving communication, happy communication, one-on-one -on -one communication, dancing to the music until late at night, until the bar closes, a sense of being complimented, being praised, um, being heralded for all the good that you do, being recognized. But also, this has a more intimate connotation to it. So this is Gemini energy upright. Mercury has gone direct. These are messages coming through that you want to hear. These are friendly voices and news that you want to hear. But with all this Taurus energy, I just have this feeling. Oh, you may hear from somebody that you really... Um, or it may come out that, that there is an energy here. I can't ignore it. This is not the romance reading, but I can't ignore that there is a sense of romance to this reading. You could, it, it just could be finally coming out that somebody you're spending a lot of time with, somebody that you've been friends with, building a relationship over time, little by little with this person. There's just like a change all of a sudden, a shift in what this relationship is. And it's turning to something that's a little bit more personal. They could have just come out of a relationship or you could have just come out of a relationship, which is why there's a sense of you had to overcome something or finish something, leave something in the past in order to have a future. And that could be true with anything that you're dealing with, Aries. This sense of you had to leave something in the past to be able to invest in the future. Time to collaborate, but this is turned upside down. So we have a sense of um, not wanting to collaborate or a disconnect in terms of working together. That doesn't make much sense, but I'll clarify it. Don't worry about it. No, 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 no. Hold on. Trust in divine detours. Who you want and who you want to work with or who you want to be with is shifting and changing. This is a sense of finding somebody else or maybe finding a, the person, a new person while you were with an old person or knowing this person or just being friends with them while you were in an old situation or an old relationship. This is a sense of um, figuring out, yeah, yeah like, 
who you want to work with has flipped upside down. It's changed. And this could very well be even in terms of work, somehow figuring out getting an offer that you didn't think that you wanted, but it being the best thing for you. Trust in divine detours has come out to clarify a time to collaborate. So who, who you're working with is shifting. It's changing. And this could be as simple as the realtor that you were working with wasn't working for you. And so you're making a decision to get somebody new and the communication between this, you and somebody, it's almost like as much guilt as you feel leaving this other collaboration behind you, you don't, you could care, you could care less at this point because the communication between you and this new person is so fluid. It's like you've known each other forever. So there's a shift in partnership here. It's not that you've ended partnerships where well, you may have ended one partnership, but you've shifted. This is more Libra energy, very romantic. You're building on something. You're working on something because that's the number seven, three plus four is seven. Um, this is love. This is admiring something. This is part of your grounding energy. So this is the romantic side of Venus. This is the beauty side of Venus. This is being fascinated with and falling in love with the beauty and the maybe even opulence of somebody or something of, of maybe you were looking at one house and even uh, put a down payment on it. But then all of a sudden, you, you, all of a sudden, unexpectedly working with a totally new person or out of the blue uh, on Zillow, for God's sake, you find the house of your dreams and you can't take your mind off it and you can't take your eyes off it. And it's falling in love and being absolutely hypnotized with the divine beauty of this object or this new person that is actually making you shift your focus. Let spirit be your guide. Once again, the energy of three plus two equals five. Seeing things from an objective perspective, seeing things through somebody else's eyes, spiritual intervention is making you change your mind. It's making you change your mind for what you see in the future. That's important. Those two things have to go together. It's making you change your mind or what you see in the future being what you call home. I've been getting that energy of home, whether it's a house itself, whether it's the place that you live, or whether it's simply like what you call home or who you build your home with. This is heart chakra space. There's lots of romance on the table, but there is a shift. There is a divine intervention and a spiritual awakening that makes you want something different and realize that something different is what you need and where you really feel at home. Wow. And that's your grounding energy. And the energy is going to favor you. And look at, look at what's on the bottom of the deck. Partnership. This is, this is romance. This is love. This is getting together, finding somebody that you, that really adores you. This could be a shift in your, a major shift in your love life. Um, definitely the energy of, of, of falling in love and even healing in some ways, healing. Whatever clutter or infestation or nastiness was infecting you, making a decision to, um, Look at the big picture instead of the small picture because it says tend to the small things, but it's almost like, it's like you've been looking, it's like, it's like, <sighs> look at the small things and right, look at the small, stop. I'm going to flip the camera around so you can see what I'm talking about. This is what I was talking about. Tend to the small things is sitting right next to see the big picture. So it's almost like you're seeing that the big picture is those little things that you've been overlooking. Those, those, those nitpicking details that you have been sort of overlooking, like washing away or trying to wash away, are the things that are making the, the, the biggest picture. You know, it's those little things that mean the most. And when the little things aren't there or little things have built up too much, they actually become the big picture. They are the big picture. It's like the little things have become the big picture. They're what's making you see or awaken to a new direction or the future.
So whether it is finding somebody's little things and, and how, how you love them and how, how they love you just because of those little things build up over time, maybe it wasn't the ideal circumstance or situation at first, but it's, it's about these little nuances. It's about these little tidbits. You know, maybe it was a house that was a little bit like ruddy on the outside, but in the inside, it's got all this beautiful original molding and it's, it's in a walking distance to the train that you always use. And then you can like, it's a five, if it's a five mile bike ride to the beach and it, and you're starting to realize that it's the little things that make up the big picture that creates your home. And that's why your focus is shifting. And there's a communication here that's shifting. See, it's like, it's like maybe speaking to somebody differently, but it's, but more or less, it's like time to collaborate has been flipped upside down. You're switching who you're collaborating with. You're changing your tune. Trust in divine detours is right next to it's time to collaborate, which is the only thing that's upside down. Which is something has shifted in who you're working with. And it's because of those beautiful little things that have become the big picture, that have become more important than anything else that you had dreamed of or hoped for or wanted. Be here now in the present moment. Uh, like, like <clears throat> being inspired by and completely changed by... A happy accident, something you ran into, something or someone that you just sort of like happened upon, but you were led there by spirit. I keep getting a sense of home, home, home. And so if this is relationship, this is not just some fly by night relationship. This is the real deal that you're coming into. It's almost like you're going to run into them randomly, randomly. You're going you're gonna to absolutely just be fixated on something that's so beautiful you can't take your eyes off of it and you're going to know immediately that's my home. But it's different from the partner you were with. Okay, you know what? Let me go into tarot because I want to articulate all of this and then there's going to be that romantic reading that definitely you guys need. Um, so that link is below. Aries, I'll see you over there.